How do you make business problems disappear? Wrap them in bacon. For business owners, marketing execs, and anyone trying to grow your business, pump your profits, and make more while doing less, welcome to Bacon Wrapped Business with Brad Costanzo. Sizzling hot business advice guaranteed to make you fat. Profits. Every week our chefs will serve you proven recipes for ramping up your revenue. Now here's your host, Brad Costanzo. Today, I've got a couple of buddies of mine on the show, and we've actually been talking for about an hour and a half prior to this conversation, and hopefully we haven't run out of material, but I guarantee that we haven't, because these are two of the brightest marketers out there. Uh, they're here in San Diego, and we share a lot of commonalities between each other. That's why we've been able to talk for the past hour and a half on this stuff before we shared the best stuff with you. Uh, I'd like to introduce you in just a moment to Matt Wolf and Joe Fear from Evergreen Profits. I will encourage you to subscribe to the show if you like what you hear, if you're not already a subscriber, and let me know what you think. And at any time you want to reach me, you can send an email to askbrad at baconwrappedbusiness.com. And that being said, let's get to it. So today's guests, uh, I do not have an official bio, but I will tell you what I know about them. Matt and Joe are here in San Diego, and they are really brilliant strategists when it comes to marketing, especially digital marketing and online offer creation, traffic, conversion, and uh, really you name it. They're kind of a jack of all trades, much like myself, and they know a lot about a lot. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have them on my show, especially I was on their show recently and we really hit it off and shared a lot of cool stuff that's working. They are famous for some of their really really uh, astounding and ninja tactics that work to help you grow your business in a multitude of ways. And they're, uh, you know, just like myself, always searching out new cool ideas and sharing it with their fans on their, uh, on their podcast as well, uh, which I believe is hustle and help me flow out guys. Chart. Hustle, hustle and what's flow that? Chart. Hustle and flow. I was going to say, it's not hustle and grow. Is it? It's hustle and flow chart. Hustle and, hustle flow, and flow, chart. flow chart. I love it. All right. <laughs> So now the video should be going back and forth to us. So guys, say hi to uh, Bacon Wrap Business. Hi there. How are you? <laughs> are you ready to ignite? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to uh, jack your uh, jack your intro there. So have you, have you had guests before where there's two guests on the other end like this, or is this the first one? Uh, they may have they may have been, but we were doing audio, and I don't, I don't know. Have you ever had a guest sitting on a pillow as a booster seat, so I don't look short next to my business partner? Right? <laughs> I was gonna say you guys could have sat on each other's laps, and that would have made well, an entirely sure, different show. Like <laughs> At least you're not under the desk. Oh man! <laughs> and we're starting. Yeah, out that we're way. going. Right, cool. We are going that way. Uh. So, guys, well, welcome to the show. As I said, you guys are just a few miles away, but yeah. uh, we were going to we were thinking about doing this in person, and we should do. Some shows. I think actually the three of us could have our own show and do like some guest three-way action that would be really entertaining. Okay, <laughs> yeah, my, my head just went somewhere else again. But no, ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> I honestly, you know, we were we were jokes. chatting for the last hour and a half, and by the time we got done chatting, we're like, all of this should have been a podcast. I know. Uh, I feel so. like that's always our our conversations. <laughs> I was like, why don't we just record everything Gary V style? You know, right? We could have. We may have needed a couple of edits in there to. Yeah. blur you know, some things out or whatever blur a couple things out <laughs> That's all right so all good. <laughs> the 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 hard part about interviewing you guys as we talked about is what exactly should we talk about because there's so many directions we can go but a couple of the directions i want to set up for my audience and for you guys is that number one you've recently uh revamped your entire business model mm. and we'll talk about kind of the two prong barbell approach to the business model that you're taking now, uh, as well as some of the stuff that's really working now, because as you said, you, you've got a lot of fun ninja tactics and you guys have done some stuff from closing consulting clients with Facebook messaging and doing some really cool, unique SEO strategies. Uh, and uh, I think I first started paying attention to you guys when you were really talking about content marketing mm -hmm. and ways to do that that doesn't drive you crazy because content marketing is one of those things that's super important, but it can just seem like such a mountain to climb right. when you're like, okay, crap, <laughs> what do I do now? Oh, yeah. So that's kind of the directions I want to go. And that being said, for my, especially for my audience, we may not get to any of those places. <laughs> <laughs> that's possible. We'll just have to do round two, three, and four. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> Give me a give me a quick background about 
uh, how you guys got got started in the business, how you how you kind of met and bring us up to you know speed of where we're at right now, because you guys didn't just start doing this six months. No, ago. we've hmm. well, we've been doing online marketing stuff since about 2007. Uh, so it's been about 11 years that we've been doing this stuff. And in 2007, we started by blogging. So we had a blog called um, I will no not I will teach you to be rich. How I will be rich. Very similar to right. uh, Ramit Sethi's blog, I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Uh, but it was all about personal finance and very similar niche to what Ramit teaches. Um, mm -hmm. All about how to build your wealth and uh, investments. And I was a finance major in college at the time. So I was studying a lot of personal finance and reading balance sheets and income statements and stuff like that. So we talked about that kind of stuff on the blog. Mm -hmm. um, we started making little trickles of money from AdSense and selling links and advertising on the site. Went... Let's do this in a different niche. Right. So we built another blog about health and fitness called Be Healthy and Relax, which is actually still live to this day and still generates revenue for us. Um, that one we built in probably 2008, like mm -hmm. a year after we started the other one. Um, started making money with that one. And then um, at that point, I think Joe and I kind of split paths for a while. Uh, the blogs were still running, but I went and decided I'm going to teach this stuff. I love this blogging stuff. I'm making good money, um, but I feel like I can make even more money if I teach how I'm doing this stuff. So I went and created a course called the WordPress Classroom and taught how to set up your WordPress blog, how to drive traffic, uh, how to put content on there, what plugins to put on it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, ran that for a couple of years. Then I had a partner named Bradley Will come in and say, hey, I love what you're doing. I've got a product in a similar niche. Maybe we should merge. So we merged my product with his product called Free Blog Factory at the time and created learntoblog.com. So we had learned to blog, ramped that up, and eventually I sold that to Brad. So he bought me out of that company. Um, and then uh, it was around that time that Joe and I reconnected and said, hey, let's, let's start teaching the stuff that we've done over the last few years. And... Um, you know, while I was off doing that, Joe was off doing his own thing. So well, I took kind of the more, so our podcast name, it's kind of describes exactly like how our personalities are. So I was always more of the hustler. So I work with a lot of clients, had a whole animation video um, agency where we help people create VSLs, you know, video sales letters, mm -hmm. uh, promo videos for startup, uh, a lot of startup companies in Silicon Valley and around the world. Uh, the city of Istanbul hired me for, for something at one time. I'm like, that's nice. weird. <laughs> but um, did a lot of that through outsourcing. I never animated anything, but I always really had a good time talking with people, kind of like you, mm -hmm. Brad, closing deals, getting creative with stuff, and um, kind of created, I mean, that's seven years. That's kind of what I did mm -hmm. until we re-merged again for like the 15th time, it feels like. <laughs> uh, can't yeah, our careers guy. kind of like went like this. You, you guys know. are like an on and off again, light switch relationship. Right? Exactly. Like, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so we, we reconvened uh, maybe two years ago and started up an agency um, because I like, I like getting in the weeds. I like doing the technical stuff, building the sites, doing the SEO, you know, uh, traffic, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's my wheelhouse. I love that stuff. Joe was a sales guy. He liked to go out and get clients and stuff. So we said, Hey, let's, let's start an agency. I'll go out and get the sales. Matt, you go make the shit for people. Wait, can we cuss on here? Yes, you can. We are now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, you can. <laughs> Is that going to be bleeped? Okay. Uh, yeah, so Joe was going to go out and sell, sell it. I was going to go out and build it. We did that for a good, uh, I don't know, we did it for a couple of years. That was... Yeah. It was about a couple of years. Yeah, we and... did it for a few years. Um, and uh, we got sick of dealing with clients in that capacity. We got sick of the, uh, the website looks great, but can you move the image 30 pixels up oh, yeah. or can you make the logo bigger yeah, make the logo <laughs> yeah. the logo's not big enough you yeah. know like all that kind of crap we just got sick of it well and, yeah. really actually what we got sick of was that stupid clients not really following through because we started to learn hey we got to cherry pick these clients who we're working yeah. with it's important time. yeah but the bigger thing was we kind of capped out on our earning potential like mm. we would do really fucking good work and um, some people, we've had equity deals, but a lot of these, you know, we're a newer agency, so we had to prove ourselves. We're mm -hmm. getting paid a lot on the uh, retainer every month, but we're like, God damn it. Like, we're making them great results, yeah. <laughs> and and we're just like, we hit a ceiling. That was, that was yeah. sort of a big mindset shift for us was, so we had a, a few clients that were paying us, you know, somewhere around like five grand a month on retainer to just build stuff for them and consistently create content for them, but we realized, we can do a lot to make their business grow, grow, grow. And no matter what, we're always going to be stuck at this $5,000 retainer. So what yeah. we decided to do instead was let's do the exact same stuff we're doing for these clients, but let's do it and promote affiliate products instead. 
So we went and started building out websites um, and, and content, you know, blogs and things like that to do the exact same thing we were doing as an agency. But instead of helping the agency make money, we were promoting affiliate products and that just made the income skyrocket. And as soon as we saw the affiliate income coming in from the same stuff we were doing, we went and fired all of our clients and said, we're done doing agency work. Everybody right. go away. It was a good day. Yeah. I've never been a big fan. I mean, I, I have a consulting company and I have clients and I have mm-hmm. client partners and stuff, and I've never wanted to build a big agency for a lot of those same reasons. And you know, the interesting thing about agency work and even consulting, especially just consulting for fees is that if the client does, if the client doesn't do what you tell them to do, right? It's because you, you can do some stuff for them, but a lot of times they need to actually mm-hmm. provide something as well. If they don't do what you tell them to do, they don't make money and they're just paying you a fee and you look like an expense to them and they blame you, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes they take the blame, but you, they quit and they lose a client. You lose a client and an income source because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Right. But if they do what you're supposed to do, they make a lot of money and you're in you know, like your percentage is of that goes way down because if you are char- charging 5,000 a month and you do something that makes them 50,000 a month, great. You made 10%. But if that made them a hundred thousand, you're you only yeah. made 5%. And, 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 and the, the affiliate world that we work in, most affiliates pay out between, you know, on the low end 30% on the high end 75%, 75, yeah. but average is probably around 40 or 50%. So, I mean, you know, we can, we can help some of these affiliates just skyrocket their traffic, make a lot of money and take a 50% cut for ourselves. So and that's so, how we looked at it is that, yeah, a percentage of that business or those sales, shit, that's a bigger bang for our buck. We're on bosses at the end of the day. We're working yep. with people, affiliate partners that we know and trust typically. That's mm-hmm. that's who we work when with. I, well, and I love how on some of the affiliate products that you guys have done, you've said, look, um, your, your site looks good and your webinars and everything else. We think we can sell it better. So you create mm-hmm. your own uh, landing pay. And this is not yep. like for anybody's followed affiliate marketing, this is not total rocket science, but the way you guys have done it is really high quality is we're going to pre-sell the hell out of this our own way, the way that we would do it if we owned it. Yep. And then you're still going to get the sales, but we get to now test a lot more things without having to be in your back end messing with your website. Or doing customer service or any of that. Or anything. Dealing with refunds, chargebacks, all that bullshit. Yeah. Right. I mean, Hate you still it. get refunds on affiliate products, but yeah. we don't actually have to like go back and forth with the customer. That's in somebody else's plate. So, I mean, that was uh, that was a big mindset shift for us. And there's also that element of it's really easy to fire a client, right? If if, a, if an affiliate product's not working out for us or the, the product creator isn't treating us right or paying us fast enough, all right, I'm we're out. just going to move on to something else. Sorry, bye-bye, right? And exactly. we don't even have to talk to them. We just stop doing it, right? So um, there, there was that element. And so what we also decided to do around the same time we switched into the affiliate stuff was we created a print newsletter called the EGP letter, the Evergreen Profits letter. And that was a monthly newsletter. It was 99 bucks a month. And we essentially every month just taught the various tactics that we were using to build up these affiliate sites and to to do the stuff we did in our agency. And we ran that newsletter for about 13 months. And then as you alluded to earlier, uh, last month, about six weeks ago, we decided, all right, we're going to turn off this income stream. So we grew that to where we had about 300 subscribers. And um, we just decided one day, you know what? We don't want to sell this information. We don't want to, we don't want to be marketers that are selling marketing information to people who are marketers, marketers, (laughs) right? right? We just, we didn't want to be in that world anymore. So we said, let's turn off this newsletter and let's just completely teach this stuff for free. We'll probably get a bigger bang for a buck. We'll get more traffic to our website. Um, We'll get more, uh, more, more people will respect our philosophies and tactics because it's, we're, we're casting a bigger net of who gets to see this stuff. And so we turned that off and replaced it with sort of kind of consulting. Yep. Sort of sort of, kind of. Okay. Well, that just teed me up for a great question. <laughs> yeah, I bet. What is sort of kind of consulting? That's a good question because I don't even know. Yeah. What is that, Matt? No. So, so well, what, you want to go? Actually, that's before that really quick. I want to talk about that whole bloodbath thing. Um, yeah. We kind of alluded that to that. Uh, and I think on our podcast, we were talking about it. So Tim Ferriss had this podcast. Yeah, uh, or not podcast. It was an article. Blog post. Blog. Yeah, yeah, and I'll actually I'll link to to it so folks can see the Tim Ferriss article. Right on. Yeah, and he basically said, you know, if you're a product owner selling a product within twenty to a hundred bucks, you're basically in the bloodbath zone. That's where the majority of the people are trying to compete on price. You know, for any kind of product, you're dealing with cust- like usually the bottom of the barrel customers. Not saying all of them, but 
a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of refunds, chargebacks, excuses, customer service, and it's just so the highest high maintenance. Yep. Super, super high maintenance, higher ad costs, all this stuff. You can't profit as easily. Let's be honest. Let's we're all in the game of profit and easily, yeah, you know, or easier at least, yeah. and um, and scaling. But so we basically deliberately decided, let's get the hell out of the middle zone and play on the far edges. Mm-hmm. So let's go free, which is a tough place to be in. But if you're backed by affiliate revenue, we looked at like eighty percent of our business was uh, the income was coming from affiliate revenue not our EGP letter, not all this other products that we were selling. We're really fucking good at selling affiliate stuff. Um, so we're like, cool. Well, that's writing on the wall, 80, 20 rule. Let's focus on the affiliate stuff. That's the free, but then the far end is very ultra expensive or at least higher priced starting usually around four or five grand for high end or high touch consulting, be it, you know, road mapping sessions together virtually maybe in person, uh, events that we're holding in San Diego and beyond. Um, mm-hmm. That's what we're all doing on that higher end spectrum. So. Yeah, so you kind of mentioned the, the sort of bar- barbell. We don't operate anywhere in the middle. We don't have any products that are, you know, $1 to even like $500 or $1,000. The no, cheapest free product or we high sell ticket. now is a minimum $2,000, right? So we operate on we put out a ton of shit for free or you can pay us for that extra hand holding. We don't operate anywhere in the middle anymore. That's exactly how, you know, those who know me, that's exactly how I've been operating. And my podcast is my, is my method for putting out the content, mm-hmm. whether it's my own or whether it's sharing, you know, stuff that you guys are sharing. Um, people ask me all the time, where can I buy your course? I'm like, I don't have a course. I do not want to just create a course. I do not, uh, you know, want to support like a hundred dollar, yeah. $200 course, but I work with clients at a very high level, very deeply ingrained in their business, whether I'm consulting them or purchasing them or uh, partnering with them or something like that. And that's the exact same area that I like to work in as well. So I think when you made that shift, you probably also, there was probably a good degree of of, um, relief off your shoulders because it is different when you have to produce content that you know people have paid for and you know at any moment if you if you slip up on your content they're going to cancel yep, sure. on you right because i mean that happens to me i've got several things that i pay for monthly and i'm i got one newsletter recently from somebody else and i was like yeah it's not as good as last month i started to rethink my like maybe i could use that 97 dollars a month yep, right. maybe i'll cancel it so i know the mindset of a customer and i'm not a pain in the ass customer but i was like immediately thrown into that scenario so mm-hmm. i think that's probably taking a lot of stress will, off your back. We'll qualify it with saying that a newsletter, a, a subscription newsletter that you physically mail to somebody's house has some of the best retention rates we've ever seen. Oh, so I don't want yeah. to deter people who, that if, if they Do love that, to yeah. create content, that's, I think it's a brilliant business model. Um, Me too. We just looked at the sort of 80, 20 of things and most of our money came from affiliate stuff or selling high ticket consulting type stuff. That was just kind of an extra thing in the mix that, probably took up 70 plus percent of our time, but generated less than 20% of our revenue. Yeah. It's the opposite of the 80, 20 rule, sure, right? Yeah. yeah. You're, you're doing the 80 that produces the 20 and it's like, wait a minute, like, what, what am doing? I doing here? Just the, um, yeah. speaking of that, I think, it, I think I heard about this strategy from Dan Kennedy originally, which was, if you're going to do like he goes, this was one of the best ways to market, especially if you're doing any kind of direct mail mm-hmm. uh, or physical newsletter. He says, find your find your customers, right? And you can rent lists, mm-hmm. you know, mailing lists, et cetera. This is expensive, by the way, but if you know who it is. Um, and he says, just start sending them your newsletter, like your big newsletter. And it's, it's not a sales letter. It is quite literally a newsletter. Mm-hmm. Start sending it to them and do it two or three times. Put a price on there like up top, uh, like, yeah. yep. you know, this 97, this $97 a month newsletter or whatever it is, they just start getting it. Now, if it's your target market, they're not going to, they're going to be confused as hell, but they're going to be <laughs> yeah. interested. He goes after maybe three, uh, three, uh, two or three or whatever yeah. issues, you could send them a, Hey, these three free were free. If you'd like to continue your subscription call here, yeah. or you put a phone number on there because a lot of times people will call and go, Hey, what is this? I didn't order it. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, like, well, it. did you, did you like it? <laughs> do, you, uh, do you want it? I just thought that was brilliant. Now, granted that takes some capital. Yeah. Our very first do. issue, we did something not on probably this, the, the scale that Dan Kennedy does, but we, we literally sent our newsletter to people that we saw as large influencers in our niche. Mm-hmm. 
hoping that some of them would go and be like, oh, I got this thing um, in the mail from Matt and Joe. This thing is phenomenal. And like post on Instagram or something. Right. You know, and, and we did. We got a few people to go and do that. A few sort of influencers in the quote unquote internet marketing niche to go and, and post about the newsletter and talk about how cool That's it great. Was. Yeah, yeah, especially you send it out to the yeah to the influencers and just kind yeah. of blow them away with that stuff. It's, yeah, doing those things to go the extra mile, they make a lot. It's, it's highly leveraged activities. That's all. Um, yeah. So speaking of that, so now we know enough about your, you guys' boring ass story. That's right. Just <laughs> kidding. Um, we know about that. Let's let's get into some of the uh, the bacon bits, the sizzling hot business Sweet. Uh, ideas <laughs> in it, and the fun. You're stuff. making me hungry. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you talked a little bit about, and this was in previously. You talked about what um, you know, kind of like being everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. Like yeah. you've got a whole model for like, wow, I, like omnipresent. Like, yeah, pretty much. You know, you're, you're all over the place. I want to talk first about that strategy and so, tell me, tell me how it works, how you've employed it and kind of what's involved with it, because it's, it's, it's really a powerful, powerful it is. strategy. Yeah. Well, we, we, we stole this concept totally from Scott Oldford. I was just, that's why I use the word omnipresent because he actually talks a lot yeah, about well, that. He, he said something, I don't know which well, podcast it was. It may have even been, I think he was on mine. your podcast, right? Yeah. But um, he <laughs> mentioned to somebody at some point that he considers his business like herpes. Once you get it, you never get rid of it. The herpes are <laughs> exactly. in it. Right? So one, one, once, uh, once you've seen him once, like he's everywhere, right? So that, yep. that's kind of been our philosophy. If you check out our blog at Evergreen Profits and you view one piece of content, you can't get rid of us from that point on. The magic of retargeting, right? Oh, yeah. The magic of retargeting. We're going to hit you with, um, with Google Display Network ads. We're going to hit you with YouTube uh, retargeting ads, Facebook retargeting ads. We're going to try to get you on your list so we can uh, on our list so we can email you. We're trying to get you on our chat bot through Facebook so we can send mm-hmm. you Facebook Messenger messages. Um, so pretty much once you land on our site, you're now on our retarget list to just see us everywhere. Question, YouTube yeah. retargeting on that. Are you guys doing a quick, like, what's your strategy on the YouTube retargeting? So if I go land on your site, which I'm actually going to go there right now. So, just so I can get- the YouTube retargeting we're doing with some of our affiliate sites right now. Um, we don't actually have one set up right now for Evergreen Profits. Oh, cool. Go so to like our, our Thrivecart sales page. Yep. We'll get Thrivecart. Start seeing, yeah. Get um, Thrivecart.com. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you're listening and watching this, I'll put this in the show notes as well. Uh, get Thrivecart.com is one of their affiliate pages where they describe the benefits of Thrivecart. And you can not only see uh, the way that Matt and Joe are doing some of their affiliate marketing, which is just a great way to learn, but you can also learn about Thrivecart, which is sure. a great cart. So, yeah. So, All right, I am cookie. Yay. So, now that you've been to get Thrivecart, you're going to see a YouTube video probably on YouTube where we're, we're giving you a walkthrough of the various templates and themes and stuff that are available on Thrivecart. You're going to start cool. seeing one of two ads from us on on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We have an ad that goes to you if you've just landed on the page and browsed away. And we have a different ad that goes to you if you've actually made it to checkout cart. So So the checkout is where it gets kind of funky. Yeah. This was like a harebrained idea. We just wanted to test, but this is where, you know, mini chat and chat bots. It was kind of like all the rage at TNC last, what, January, February. And we're like, all right, how do we use this creatively? So we're like, why don't we use it for like a retargeting ad? So if we know they landed on the money page or checkout page, Let's drop a pixel there, Facebook retargeting pixel, and follow them with an ad that basically on Facebook that says, hey, do you have any questions? We saw you're about to you know, pull the trigger on this. Just click this button and start a message with us. Yeah, so they and click the ad great. on Facebook, the little messenger pops up, and they start a discussion with our support lady who helps us close sales of, of Thrivecart. And we pay her 10%, so she's doing our support, but at the same time, cutting her a little check on each commission she she uh, closes. Yeah, so now I so you're going to get retargeted on YouTube. You're going to see those two Facebook ads, depending on how far you got into the, the Thrivecart funnel. You're going to... Um, you're going to see Google Display Network ads. So you'll be visiting random blogs and websites here and all of a sudden start seeing banners for Thrivecart. Um, and, you know, we, we, we do a very similar process with our own blog. If you view our own content, the only what part we haven't rolled in yet is YouTube ads with that. So yep. with our own Evergreen Profits blog, if you do land there, you are going to see Google Display Network ads and various Facebook ads from us. And every new podcast release, you're going to, uh, you're going to get a retarget about, hey, this new episode just went live. Check it out. Um, so you're going to start seeing us everywhere just by visiting one of our two sites. 
I love that. And it's not mm-hmm. that expensive too, it's because not, you're yeah. only targeting the people that hit your site. We're not going after a mass scale of a million people at a time. At any given time, there's 20 or 30,000 people in that target audience and that's it. Well, and the other thing is it doesn't take a lot of tech to set up either or maintenance. Mm-hmm. I mean, really the support. You just lead. need to know the base you need to know the base. You can hire people to do this, but you need to know the totally. basics of Google display, basics of YouTube, yeah. uh, basics of Facebook, Retarded. obviously email once they're on there and chat bots are something I've been having a lot of fun with Dude, lately. You can get so in now with mini chat. Uh, it's, I mean, it's free or it's like 10 bucks a month. It's stupid. It's every yeah. person. You know, using have that. you noticed that they had, they used to have, I just noticed this the other day that some of the things that I started off with many chat and did a $10 a month um, subscription yeah. for, because I wanted the ability to have comments yeah. mm-hmm. on uh, like trigger it with a comment. That's now free. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like go in there and then go to the growth tools. Cause I was using this and going through, I was like, wait, I think I can maybe cancel some of my premium connections there probably because I don't need it. Cause I yeah, don't need yeah. the JSON version. I don't need this. So and um, you can get really ninja with mini chat with Zapier now too. We've yes. got our Zapier. We use a uh, drip for our email, mm-hmm. our email marketing. And we have a uh, mini chat sync to drip using Zapier, which, you know, is a tool that sort of connects various tools together. And so now when people start messaging us, um, one of the first things we ask is, Hey, can we get your email address real quick? So if we yep. can get back to you quick enough, we'll, we'll make sure to email you. Well, I, now we just added you to our mini chat list as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did that the, with the, the, the day, the day that many chat sent out the email saying Zapier is set up. I went in there and I noticed it and I, and I set that, that exact same thing yep. up automatically. So the strategy that, um, the strategy used for one of my clients was, Hey, I've got this really cool thing. Uh, would you like it? And then they comment on the, on the, the Facebook ad and it triggers a many chat and it says, Hey, you said you wanted that, right? Which, you know, anybody who knows about many chat and the way it works and chat bots, you have to kind of get their, them to respond mm-hmm. to something. You don't just want to give them a link. Yeah. Uh, Cause that subscribes them to your chat bot. And then it's, um, then it's like, yeah, Hey, great. I'll send it to you. What's your email? And boom, now I got them on both. And I love that. It, oh, it was yeah. quite literally game changing, especially because not only that, you guys may have realized this, not only the ability to pull them in, but to, if they take an action, if they buy the product, if they actually go and opt in to something and I've got them, now I want to segment them out of my many chat yep. general broadcast list. So I know we're getting down into the weeds on some of the technical stuff. Yeah. And for people who haven't done chat bots and many chat, you can contact Joe and Matt or contact me and we'll, you know, probably charge you a hell of a lot of money to to build one for you. (laughs) But but, but really, I mean, like if you just want to start, just get mini chat, the free version, dick around in the uh, growth tools area, because just looking at those growth tools, you're just like, holy crap, I could do so much. So like another thing, we kick off with uh, Thrivecart, for instance, we Mm freaking put exit intent chat bot messages. So when people are trying to leave, there goes a mini chat pop up. Yeah. There's a live chat window on the bottom right. I mean, it's yeah. you really That's can't amazing. get rid of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. <amazing. laughs> it was funny. We were uh, we were talking to somebody who helps manage our ads, and she went and looked on her site, and she's like, "Holy crap! You're you're like getting me everywhere now." Because when you land on one of the sites, literally a little Olark chat pops up, which our support yep. lady manages. And then when you try to leave, it's like, "Hey, don't leave. Did you have questions about Thrivecart before you bought?" And a little mini chat pop up pops up. And then once you leave, now you're seeing the YouTube videos, the Google display, the Facebook ad. We're, it, we're just everywhere now. So, you know, that that's kind of been the method. And that's some of the biggest feedback we've gotten from people is you guys are just everywhere now. Like, it, and it just gives that perception of like, we've built this massive, massive brand and everybody knows about us. And it looks like we're spending a million dollars on advertising per month to anybody who lands on our site. But that's obviously not reality. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, that was one of the things that, you know, you mentioned Scott Oldford and I'll put a link to his post in here because that's one of his whole things is you don't necessarily need to get your message out to every single person. Um, yeah. yeah, as many people as possible, but just go after the most targeted people, but just be like herpes. Just yeah. be freaking, it's all about effective be, messaging. Yeah, be herpes. Yeah. Be herpes. That's, that should be a, a posted on your monitor here, Matt. Be herpes? Yeah, some cool <laughs> ones. Like, I'm not sure I know. want to invite that uh, message into my life too much. Yeah. It's like, yeah, too, too the, much. I've watched like Law of Attraction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I do have a little post-it notes. Your on wife my, is on like, honey, how did you have, how do you have herpes? Did you cheat? On? Like, no, I just manifested that shit <laughs> just on, a, just on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I got it from Brad Costanzo. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, 
sorry, Mrs. Please... Wo- sorry, Mrs. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> she can probably hear you. Um, <laughs> by the way, I think what we should do is give him the PDF. It's like a roadmap yeah. thing. It shows high level of what we're talking about, how oh, we're, yeah, we're, we're herpes of you know the internet. Would, so. would you like to do that via chatbot or via Oh, uh, we can get a little creative. How about you just drop a link and we'll give that you a works. link, whatever that in is. The yeah. notes, the people, notes, in the show notes. In the show notes. You know what we we'll can do, that. actually? Uh-oh. If we want to be really cool. We could we could share the uh, the flow chart of the how this all fits together because we do have a flow chart that shows you know Google and ManyChat and Facebook ads, but we've also made a series of videos about how we actually set up ManyChat. And it was true. a course that we used to sell, but as you know, we stopped selling info products. So it's a free for all, ladies. Give it away for free. <laughs> so we do have actually a, a mini video course. Well, mini. It's like a two hour course. No, it's all pretty about big. Mini chat. <laughs> all right. So yeah, That's it'll probably be a chatbot link, and then we'll we'll get you suited up with it for free. So, nice. I yeah, love that. Notes, so we'll hook that up. Um, another thing we like to do on our blog is we've been trying to make unique sort of opt-ins for pretty much every piece of content now. So that depending on uh, what, what content you land on, you might see a different opt-in. And we've just like skyrocketed our opt-in rates from our blog by doing that. Um, yeah. So of- those content upgrades is a lot of people call them. What, uh, what What's your secret on creating? Because that, that can be like, oh man, I got to create a new piece of content for everything. So mm-hmm. what are some of your hacks for doing those quickly? So there's a couple of things that we do for podcast episodes. Um, simply giving away the transcripts is a really, really easy one. And a lot of people surprisingly opt in for the transcripts of podcasts. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I started doing that early on and I stopped because I didn't get as many people opting in as I thought. And every time I did one, it was like 60 bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so like not to sound too cheap, but I was like, it's not really working. And right. I don't know if people are actually reading through them, but so I stopped found. it. This is what I found. I found that the more technical discussions tend yeah. to get a much better opt-in rate than the, the ones where we're talking more like mindset-y type so stuff. So step-by-step So things. Yeah, yeah, if we're, because wa- a lot of our podcasts are about walking people through a process. So we get a guest on and we say, what sort of step-by-step process can you walk our audience through? And those processes actually get, they get opted in for really well with the transcripts. Um, when we are just kind of having a general conversation and there's a lot of like philosophy and mindset type stuff, we don't tend to get a lot of opt-ins on that. So I think the the type of content makes a difference as well. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing that we do that seems to work really well is we use a tool called Designer by Paul Clifford, which you, you're, I think you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, and what that does- I don't use it. I don't use it, but you like it? We do. Yeah. You it basically works. plug in yeah. a URL to a blog post and it'll spit out a PDF version of that blog post. And it's really nice, really clean looking. And so a lot of times if we've got nothing better, we'll just, we'll say, Hey, download And this is the wording we use, download a printable PDF version. Yeah. For some reason, people like to print out the blog posts and read them away from a computer as well. So adding in the terminology, terminology, download a downloadable PDF seems to work the best. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, you know, um, well, can I, sh- uh, let me share one that yeah. I've done on this side and with, um, with, what do you call it? Um, Facebook messenger bots. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and ads. So, and I don't know if we shared the, if I shared this with you guys, I think I did. I've shared yeah, this with you guys you before, did. but I'll share it with the peoples, <laughs> the watching peoples and the listening peoples that, um, did a Facebook ad with a really, really rich, uh, content rich uh, Facebook ad, like a ton, not only a video, but, uh, just a ton, uh, like a thousand word article mm-hmm. basically on uh, a very and semi-technical too on a Facebook ad. The thing is a Facebook ad or a Facebook post is a very inconvenient way to consume something. And especially if you really like it, like Facebook gives you the ability to save it, mm-hmm. but it's inconvenient. So what I've done is I've taken a very technical kind of like blog post as an ad. And then I said, I know this is long. If you'd like a, a printable PDF of this, just leave a comment below and let me know and I'll send it to you. Mm-hmm. So then they leave a comment, the chat bot fires up and it says, Hey, you, by the way, you don't have to use a chat bot. You can send them to a, you can send them to a page that is just an opt-in page mm-hmm. to download what they just read. Right. Right. So a lot of people think that you have to get their email before you give them the the bribe. But if you just give it to them in a more convenient form that they want like that, it works on the ads, too. And I got like 400 comments with a very little ad spend, um, which is almost 400 op you know, opt-ins as well. So it's just kind of realizing that, yeah, you don't have to create something new if you put it in a different modality. Yeah, no, I agree. So, yeah. Um, we've got so many different opt-ins and we're, we're really experimenting with what works. Um, well, our, our actual best converting one right now 
is actually just a digital download of our so we've got this book evergreen wisdom um and we offer a pdf like free digital download um that's one of our opt-ins that's sort of one of our we, we have a few sort of default downloads if we don't have yeah. anything better for it we'll throw one of our default ones at the post another one is the uh, we have a 10 tools that basically it's like our marketing stack and nice. of course these most of these are affiliate uh links not all of them but yeah. but they are legitimately all the tools we use so we break it down for like 10 plus days here's the tool here's how we use it how you, how you can use it some cool hacks go get it if you want Mm-hmm. So I love that. I mean, it's just like a very actionable email sequence. It's I think it's like yeah. 15 days long. Yeah. So, so on day one, you basically get a list of all the tools and then day by day after that for the next, like what well, we give them some bonus tools after the 10 days, but we send them an email every single day with a description of how we use each one of these tools. So day one, you get the whole list and then every day you get a, a deeper dive into each individual tool. And Ninja Trick, I mean, we, we've kind of just started this out. It's already going really well. But if you think, like, you can optimize each one of those pages now because each one of those tools has its own page, like Thrivecart, for instance. Mm-hmm. You can put a separate retargeting pixel there to start following around with ads specific to that product now or maybe yeah. that pain that it's trying to solve. So you could do that with that, designer, uh, drip, you know, email, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so you just like, if you really just go bazonkers, I mean, start, you know, kind of at a high level, test the the whole thing, then start dialing in. And that's really how we built this, um, this pretty sweet little, um, you know, kind of system here. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. So now if, if you're, I, I want to switch over to content marketing, because I know that this is kind of where. I first started seeing some of the content you were putting out. I know you've got this still out there, like how to kind of create content fast, especially uh, if you're not the expert or mm-hmm. whatever. What are some of your um, what are some of your best strategies on just good good consistent content marketing? So one of my favorite ways to create really good in depth content is actually to go to. Um, so are you familiar with jobs.problogger.com? The, basically the ProBlogger yes. jobs board. If you yes. go there, it used to be 50 bucks. I think they bumped it up to 70 bucks. You can post a job listing there saying, hey, I'm looking for a content writer on X topic. And you'll get 100 emails from different bloggers, writers that will all want to write for your blog. Like immediately. Mm-hmm. Like immediately. Like within 24 hours, you'll go to bed that night. You'll wake up. Your inbox will have 75 to 100 emails in there from content yeah. writers and little examples of content pieces they've written. So we'll go and do that once every six months or so. I'll take all the names that come through, put them in a spreadsheet. Um, I'm actually a super big spreadsheet nerd. Uh, so I put all these names. Have you emails. used Airtable yet? I have not used Airtable yet. It'll, it'll change Google your life. <laughs> it'll change your life, but keep going. <laughs> so we'll put all these names yeah. and emails into a Google sheet and then um, their price uh, the turnaround time. And then after they've written from us, I give them a rating on a scale of one to 10 based on how good they think they are. Um, so I'm, I'll put this all into a spreadsheet so we know who to kind of come back to over time. But, so you'll have them write what you'll have them write a piece for you. Yeah. Well, not all of them, you know, based yeah. on, based on I'll, I'll weed people out pretty quickly. You know, you do mm-hmm. the, the, all the same old tricks you do when hiring people like, Hey, in your, in your response to me, make sure you use this keyword in your email yes. when you reply to me and make sure you send me uh three, Um, three examples of your work and anybody who doesn't follow the instructions to the letter, get rid of them immediately. Right. So um, that's already a red flag. And uh, as our our friend Dan Ryan says, red flags never travel alone. So yeah, you see (laughs) one, you're like, done. you see one red flag, that's enough red flags. So, uh, you know, if they didn't follow every instruction on that, just get rid of them and just work with the people that followed your instructions. But what we like to do is we like to get very inexpensive writers. So maybe not always English is their first language, always uh, written in the U S kind of stuff. And we'll have, we'll give them our concept. They'll write it up for us. They might write like a 3000 word article, a really in-depth article for us for like 40 bucks. We'll take that article and that's our rough draft. We'll use that as our starting point. And then either myself or Joe or Patty, our, our support lady, we'll go in and basically revamp it in our voice, but we're not starting from scratch. We're not starting from a blank page. So that's kind of our mm-hmm. favorite ri- way to write long form content is to get it inexpensively written to start with. That's the rough draft. And then basically all we're doing at that point is coming in, being an editor and adding our own voice into it, adding some images to it. And then we take over that manual work from that point. I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, brings up a strategy that I learned from um, Richard Lindemann over, you know, one of the, 
one of the head guys over at Digital Marketer, mm-hmm. and he was sharing me, and he he used this with a lot of stuff, but he the context was around copywriting, and it was his 10-80-10 rule. Mm-hmm. And we're all familiar with the 80-20 rule, right? Can you right. do 20% and get 80% of the results? This is similar, but he said, you know, I'll do the first 10%. I'll like if it's a piece of copy, I'll think of a, a few headlines and and the hook and the angle and what the offer is, right? I'm gonna give you the the basic structural where I want this to go. Then he'll hire a copywriter to do 80% of the work. Yeah. But then obviously you give it back to him to finish up the final 10%. Yeah. It's like when yeah. I started really thinking like that and th- with that framework, it made a big difference. And I've started oh, yeah. to use it's that in my business as well. Um, yeah. Not as much as I need to, I need to do that more so. This year is a big focus for 2018 for me is uh, better delegation. Yeah. So, well, I think in, in, because we get guilty of the same thing is just doing too much, you know, yeah. and, and we're like, well, well, we're capable. We want it done now. You know, like we have this idea, like maybe it's Monday. We, we should get this done by Friday. It's yeah. like, all right. Always like, takes longer. Yeah, totally. And I think what it comes down, oh, I know what it comes down to is some forethought, some planning, plan the next, you know, month, two, three, the whole year, but yeah. Yeah. get specific on maybe the quarter <laughs> and like, what are your goals? What kind of content is going to fit inside that whole roadmap there that you want to yeah. achieve? And then let's delegate some shit because let's be honest, that's the only way to do it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's another big secret to the, the success of our content is we usually spend one day a year where we map out our content plan for the entire year. So we did this, uh, we actually, we're actually doing this again on Monday. We're recording this on Thursday. So in a few days, we're doing this for the year of 2018 where we're going to lock ourselves in a room and map out our entire like roadmap for the year of what we're going to release. We did it last year. We actually traveled to San Francisco and got a co-working space up there and got a private whiteboard and mapped it all out. Just, you like just go to San Francisco, just kind of get out of the Just to get ordinary. out of our normal environment, yeah. our normal space, you know, just be be somewhere else, you know, no distractions out of our normal sort of bubble like that. that we're in. Yeah. Um, and so we're actually, we're just going up to Encinitas this time, but uh, we're mm-hmm. doing it, uh, we're doing it on Monday where we map out our whole year. And that really, really helps. There's no question about what content's coming up. I can, I'll be able to tell you six months from now on, you know, April, well, that's not six months from now on June, June 13th, this piece, this blog post is going live. You know, we get that granular with it once we map it out. So that's another big trick. And then, uh, how um, about podcasts? We can talk about that whole thing. Yeah. So before I go there, I want to give you another tactic for like written content. Mm. Um, yeah. Are you familiar with uh, fancyhands.com? I am. Which I is- used to subscribe. I canceled my subscription because I had like 400 rollover yeah. to ask. <laughs> I wasn't using them. Yeah. Yeah. So with fancy hands, we we hire them to do a lot of research for us. So uh, we have I love a, them we for have a blog post yeah. that's coming out tomorrow, actually. Well, I don't know when this podcast is getting released, but we have a blog post that's coming out that... Um, that's all about the top like 25 mobile apps you can use to make money with. So things like Uber and Lyft and TaskRabbit and there's one called Gigwalk and user testing. All and these, all, yeah. yeah, all these like mobile apps that you can use to make a little bit of side income. We have that blog post coming out. We actually went and hired somebody on Fancy Hands to basically go do all the research. And Fancy Hands, the no lowest way. plan is That's 29 awesome. bucks a month. I had, I had no clue that was even like that was something they can do. And yeah. It's how much 20, are you 29 It's a month? 29 bucks a month. That gets you five tasks a month. Um, bigger articles, they're going to say, like, we need more, you to use more task credits. I think that one costs two, two task credits. Um, but they went and they researched the 20, 25 mobile apps that you can use. They gave us the name of the app. They gave us the URL of the app. They gave us a quick, like three sentence description of what the app did. And I think they linked us to like an image, Mm -hmm. like a screenshot of the app's logo. And that was all within our 29 bucks a month. I used two tasks on it and we got a list of 25, um, mobile apps that you can make money with, with the link and description and everything. And then what we did was we actually hired a writer from that point to take those, that list of 25 things and just turn it into a cohesive article that you can read. Ah, that's brilliant. So, but again, takes planning. Cause that took like two weeks to complete that one article. Like if we wanted yeah. that done tomorrow, we would have been like, shit, yeah. you know, but forethought, a little yep. bit, a little bit of uh, work from other people because they fancy had probably did like 60% yeah. of the work. I would say the writer still had to do a good amount, but yeah, that's was- always been the hardest part for me is to take, one step back so you can take two steps forward, which is like slow down to yep. speed up yep. idea yep. because I like being in momentum and moving at the seat of my pants so much that I'm just, and, it, and sometimes if I'm not in that state, I'm either like, I'm either stop or go. I, I'm sorry. I'm either fast or, 
or, or nothing stop. stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Moving slow is really hard for me. Yeah. And it's almost like being in a, you know, when you're in a traffic jam on the, on the freeway and it's moving like five miles an hour. Yeah. And I, I'm the type of person who I will take an off ramp and go, it might take me twice as long to get there, but at least I'm moving at 30 miles an hour, yeah, 40 yeah, miles yeah, an I'm hour. I'm identical. I think yeah. a lot of, we had this good conversation last yesterday because we did our big podcast chunk and we'll get into how we do our podcasting just yeah. super fast if you want. And it was like, I think it's like a trait in most entrepreneurs is you love that startup phase, that start things up. Let's brainstorm. Let's go, go, get go, you, go, go, go. Let's yeah. just go and throw a bunch of stuff at the wall yep. and see what sticks. But when it comes to like maintenance, yeah. the, like the systems and like the day-to-day grind, it's like, hey, you got a little bit of bored, you know, like yeah. maybe it's time to sell the business or just get the hell out of there and focus on something else. Yeah. I mean, our, our sweet spot is coming up with the ideas for the business, building the businesses, creating systems to make sure the businesses keep going. But then once that system's there and the business is kind of running itself, we get bored really quickly. So Bingo. that's when Same we start here. thinking, should we sell this business? Should we wrap up this business? Should we like, what should we do next? Should we completely outsource it? So somebody else is running it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So it's exactly how I, no, I, I feel the exact same way. And I think a lot of the listeners and viewers do as well. Uh, yeah. A little bit more on the podcast. Cause obviously yeah, yeah. I've got some very personal selfish reasons to, course you know learn a little bit about you know podcast efficiency and how you guys are doing it so podcasting i mean we literally podcast out of this room if you're watching the video Mm -hmm. you know it's not like a crazy studio or anything it's yet Yet. (laughs) it's on the vision board. it's on my vision board i do have a podcast studio on my vision board but the fact of the matter is it's not required i know brad you don't have some crazy fancy studio like it's cool like it's i have a handheld microphone it's 100 bucks i mean it's nice exactly the whole thing is podcasting can be daunting. And if you, if you're not consistent with it, you see a lot of drop off in your, in your listeners. I mean, we're all guilty. We've all been there, you know? So if you batch record, which we do, so we do one day per month, we'll batch record everybody for the entire month that one day. Hmm. And, um, so far our energy hasn't dropped off at that last call. So it's been good, but well, that's only what four episodes for the month. It's four only to five. Yeah. Four, four to, to five. five yeah. And we'll do it, yeah. And we'll do it all that day. It gets dropped live uh, every Wednesday of mm-hmm. every month, and we've been doing this for a, a year. year now. Literally, our nice. yesterday, yeah. And it works. We have a we have an outsourced guy that a podcast editor. He does the podcast editing, show notes, all that stuff. Matt just drops it into a Dropbox. He has a procedure list, uh, and literally just follows what fifteen lines. Yeah, and publishes that sucker every Wednesday. We just make sure it looks good. Yeah, I basically wrote in a Google Doc a process that he needs to follow. I think it's about 15 steps. So what we do is we record, just like we're recording now. At the end, we get an audio file. I take that audio file, put it in Dropbox, and then our editor literally just goes through the 15 steps on that doc, and we do nothing else at that point. He's going to put it on Libsyn, the podcast hosting. He's going to build our show notes. He's going to um, do any sort of editing that needs to be done on the podcast. Everything is out of our hands from that point. So we spend one day a month recording four to five episodes and then putting them in Dropbox. And then Joe even will tell me like, oh, shit, I didn't even realize that podcast was live yet. Like, oh, yeah. And I'll be like, dude, that podcast went live three weeks ago. Uh, like, like the podcast just happens after that. Well, we forget what do you, we even have one because we're like right. one day. What do, you do on the, what do you do on the promotion uh, aspect of it? So obviously you have, a, yeah. you have a, a list and you have your social media um, things that you can post to and say, hey, guys, I released it. Here's my list. Do you do anything yeah. else uh, yeah. as far as promoting the podcast goes? Yeah, so I've got this whole like – so our, all of our, our content marketing is all on a Trello board. So every time a piece of content goes live, Live. I'm moving it along the board for like what steps happen next. And we actually did make a blog post about our whole content marketing, like promotional strategy that we do once it goes live. So there's a, a blog post with a YouTube video that explains all that. Um, Just remind but, us, we'll give you the link. I think, I think I saw it, but I don't, I don't know if I went through the entire thing or not. Yeah. So. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a hefty post. video. It rings it's a, a bell. It's like yeah. a 25 minute video that shows the whole process, but essentially, you know, we, we mail our list every time a new blog post goes live. We have a Facebook community that's a fairly active community, so we we promote it in that community. We put the um, the podcast on a on Facebook, our Facebook fan page. Mm-hmm. We boost the post. We always just boost it to friends and uh, friends of friends. I think. Fans of fans, fans and friends yeah. of fans is is the yeah. best target we found so far, and we've tested a ton of targets. That's the one that gets the most engagement and the most clicks for whatever reason is the one that Facebook puts on there by default, which is fans and friends of fans. So yeah. we boost that. Was it like five dollars or something? We're boosting. We it's... boost ten dollars a week, so okay. it's ten yeah. bucks. We boost that. It's ten dollars over seven days. So there's always a podcast in circulation. Um, we 
uh, we use a tool. I think you use this tool too, but I can't think of the name. It's repurpose. The one. It, repurpose, yeah. Mm-hmm. Repurpose. That I.O. Yeah. That automatically takes the audio, puts it on YouTube. Uh, so it goes to YouTube. Um, we use Push Crew, mm-hmm. which is a push mm-hmm. a browser push notification. So every time a new episode goes live, it's fed by our RSS feed and the new episode just goes live out to the Push Crew. Surprisingly, Push Crew is our number five largest Dude. traffic source. It's insane. And you can go free I was just going to ask you that like because I've had mixed results with it, but you, yeah, it's been it's amazing. No. For us, it's, it's in our top five. So our number one traffic source is our email list. Number two is Google SEO. Number three is Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. Number four, I think, was Instagram. And number five was Push Crew. Which Instagram, we don't do shit we on. We haven't done <laughs> shit on Instagram. I don't know why. So Instagram how is Instagram How is Instagram so... What you mean, do you guys have a... Uh... We have an Instagram account with images, but we haven't posted a new image in four months. Like so how the hell is that months. your... How, how the hell is that doing so well? That's no the, clue. That's, one of, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what we're one of our now. great... What's the Instagram story? account name? I'm going to go that's there. That's Evergreen Profits. Instagram.com slash Evergreen Profits. Okay. So, so we got a yeah we're we've been digging into the numbers so much lately in the last like month since doing the shift over now we're like okay we're all about platform building getting more traffic inputs 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 and then we're like what the hell is instagram doing on this yeah. top of this <laughs> um, <laughs> we use uh i'm just kind of throwing out every single thing we do when a podcast goes live we use um, yeah. uh meet edgar which is it, it posts it to we only use it on Twitter. We actually don't use Meet Edgar on Facebook because we find when we use tools like that, they get zero engagement yeah. on Facebook. But totally. on Twitter, it still works. So what Meet Edgar does is it it posts your post to, to uh, Twitter and then it refreshes the post every so often. So you have a big library of posts and once or twice a day, it posts something to Twitter for you, but it will continually recycle posts. So old podcasts that we recorded six, seven, eight, nine months ago still get tweeted out from time to time using Meet Edgar. Um, and it's then crazy. we yeah. use Steemit, which is a sort of new platform on the blog on the, the blockchain. We use Steemit to write a blog post around every podcast episode, and we embed the YouTube video. So the YouTube mm-hmm. video goes on Steemit, and then we always put a little byline that says this was originally posted here. Link back to the show notes. Um, and uh, <laughs> what else do we do? It's a lot of shit. I, I, I SEO the hell out of it using Yoast SEO. Um, yeah. So we always SEO it for the guest's name. We have retargeting, yeah. obviously, always going. So like um, the other day, we had we had a guest on our podcast. This was back in the beginning, probably nine months ago, named Christine McDaniel, which you know mutual uh, acquaintance, <laughs> right? Um, she was on our podcast a long you know, nine months ago, towards the beginning, and just recently she was uh, mentioned by Richard Branson on yep, Richard Branson's that. Virgin blog because um, she went and donated a hundred thousand dollars to his charity and. When Richard Branson mentioned her on his blog, the the search for her name just skyrocketed in Google, and we were sitting right there in the number one spot for Christine McDaniel. So our <laughs> podcast, like overnight, saw a spike of like 300 downloads because people searched for Christine's name. So now we're in the habit of every single podcast, we're trying to SEO the hell out of our guest's name. So right. if anybody goes and searches that person's name, we're what you find for them. And you got to think people's names are usually pretty low. Uh, you know, they're low on yeah, the, unless they're, unless they're real famous or something. Yeah, you're Branson. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Brad Costanzo. I mean, shit. Yeah. You, I mean, guys really even, you guys aren't even on page one. Jesus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the hell. <laughs> yeah, man. So shit. there's probably more to the podcast, but I mean, Let's be honest. That's going to give you more. I mean, a lot of this stuff is is either automated systems, things like Push Crew and Meet Edgar and stuff like that. That's and the the YouTube that just kind of automatically happens. We don't think about it. We just set it up once, and that's just kind of rolling every time we make a new post. Mm -hmm. A handful of things um, I do manually, or we have it sort of outsourced, and somebody else does manually, like the reposting it to Steam it. And uh, I don't I don't have anything automatically post to Facebook anymore. I used to have it whenever a new post went live, it would automatically post to our group, it would automatically post to our page. No engagement, zero engagement. The when I just go and post it manually, I just, you know, copy and paste the link in and write a little thing around it. For whatever reason, it gets, you know, ten times the engagement as if an automated tool was posting for me. Wow. Facebook knows. So I don't know. Yeah. That is true. That is true. It's getting harder and harder. So we it stopped is. using any sort of API source into Facebook because we found that's when it just doesn't work. Um yeah, I, I, I don't think I I don't think I'm using it any of those as well currently. Come to think of it. I think I did in the very beginning, but I stopped yeah. for probably a lot of the same reasons. You just have to um, create a nice calendar. I mean, that's why we run everything without a calendar, like we would have failed. 
this whole podcast, the the content, all this stuff until we finally sat down and we're like, okay, need a content calendar, a process. The Trello thing's been game changer. Mm-hmm. Oh, I um, imagine our buddy uh, David Sinek, he runs uh, Paleo. I know David. Yeah, He's I know a, David. just a SEO badass. He runs this massive content company, and that was basically swipe from him. We just kind of optimized it or just tweaked it to ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. so, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, what are some of the nuts you guys are trying to crack right now in your business? And obviously, by that, I mean you've heard me ask this question before. But by that, I mean you know <laughs> what are whether it's people you're trying to meet, whether it's a strategy you're trying to master, or somebody you're trying to hire or fire, or mm-hmm. uh, money you're trying to raise. Just anything there that's kind of like all right. If we can figure this out, things will be better. Okay, so this is something we were having a discussion on yesterday, and we're gonna I'm thinking of where you're going. I, yeah. th- this this might get into a deep conversation here. I don't know, but um, so we we there's this concept that we have of like the North Star project, and okay. I, I don't know, I don't, I've never heard anybody else call it that. That's something that we've just been kind of calling it internally. But you look at someone like um, like Gary Vaynerchuk, right? His yeah. big goal is the to Jets. own the, the New York Jets one day, right? I, I have a better so, one. How about Elon Musk? Come on, he wants to make a freaking Mars moon, colony. Mars, yeah. Or, or, yeah, well, I mean, I'm trying to... I'm trying to I'm Basically, trying your moonshot. Like, what is your north? So, your moonshot? Yeah. And then Bill yeah. Gates, you know, he wants to eradicate polio off the face of the earth. Our problem is we don't have that sort of North Star main sort of project that we're aiming for. We yeah, just we have our I've business that, that we're sort of kind of running every day and it's making us money, but we don't have that sort of North Star big vision mm-hmm. thing that we're trying to point our business towards that yeah. this is why we do it all, right? Yeah. Other than right now it's supporting our families and you know paying for our houses sure. and stuff like that. We are trying to figure out what that sort of North Star is for our business. Mm-hmm. And, and to be honest, it's you got to think about it. It's I've been watching a mix of of Elon Musk videos and um and and Casey Neistat videos in the morning, like while I have breakfast. Yep. So it's like a little bit of crazy, a little bit of genius, and yeah. you decide who's who. But um, <laughs> but the whole thing is, it's like Elon says something. He's like, you know, typical people, we just wake up and we're like we're just solving problems, like small little problems. It doesn't matter. Like, oh, I have this task list, and I'm just gonna go about my day, commuting traffic every day not really super stoked to wake up every single day to solve that task list, you know? So right. let's build a freaking task list or whatever roadmap to get to this point where you're just like, Oh, every day, like I'm going to figure something out. That's massive. Yeah. And I've, I've literally dealt with the same <clears throat> frustration as well, because it's also not something you can fake. You can't fake this passionate moonshot project. Like yeah. I want to put somebody on Mars. Well, I really don't. So yeah, I can right. tell myself, I can tell myself that uh, till I'm blue in the face. Yeah. Well, but just, it doesn't mean it, it means anything. So it's like trying to find something that motive that's big, motivating, that North Star, but that you know you really deeply care about sure. because you know that it's going to be hard as hell. So what is that thing that forces you to go through the yeah, the, and over the is, hurdles? It sort of opens up all these like. Uh, existentialism questions between us where we start having the discussions of like, why are we doing this? Like we're, we're getting up every day and we're building this stuff and we're making money. And then, you know, you, you hit a point in your career where you make enough money to pay the bills. You, you can pretty mm-hmm. much for the most part, buy anything you want. Like we could all probably get yeah. any car we wanted. We, we live in freaking San Diego. We you can especially get one. If you want an Audi R8, I know somebody who's selling one. <laughs> I wonder who, <laughs> you know, but you get to this point where it's like the bills are paid. The, I can do what I want. I can travel. I, I can create the experiences. You know, what's the point of continuing to create more money? What's the point of building upon it, building upon it, or building upon it? Why, why are we doing this day in and day out? You know? So, I think the answer to that question is you have some sort of North star that you're always going towards. Like what happens when Gary Vaynerchuk finally buys the jets? I almost guarantee he's going to fall into like a deep depression because he's shot for this thing his entire life. And now he's got it. Now what? Well, we were talking right? about what astronauts, whoever walks on the moon, it's this effect. It's like, what now? Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. That's, that's like being a, by, being a child star, right? Yeah, it's there's, like... there's a legitimate thing that they call like the, the moonwalk effect or something like that, where pretty much every astronaut that's ever walked on the moon came back and then fell into a deep, deep depression for a long time. Because Olympic athletes, same thing. Sure. Once, once yeah. you've walked on the moon, what else is there? Like what else can you accomplish in your life that's bigger than that? Well, and I think it's like having, there's one thing between 
As I said, I've thought a lot about this too. Mm -hmm. So there's one thing like having the North star where it's a singular North star. That's like, I want to put people on Mars and, or I want to do this. And then if you accomplish it, what now versus just always setting, uh, just realizing that you do need to reset Mm -hmm. your goals and to have, and maybe you have multiple North stars out there that drive you. Um, my, my client, um, Jesse Itzler, who is, set huge goals. And many times, um, he's the author of a book called living with a seal. If you guys haven't heard about it, but Mm -hmm. billionaire, multiple serial, multiple entrepreneur. And he talks about this a lot. And he, he says, you know, uh, in reference to the NBA, because you know, he owns the Atlanta Hawks and he says the, one of the issues that a lot of basketball players like in high school and college, they have this, this dream of making the NBA and then they make the NBA and they forget to reset their goals. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you know, who doesn't LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, yeah, right. you know, all, yeah. you know, Curry, all the people who are the best of the best, they realize that, okay, now I'm in the NBA. The next North star is I want to be the, the MVP and I want to ring and I want all this other stuff. So it's, yeah, it's it's remembering to reset those goals is a, sure. is a real big thing. But I have a hard time doing that dream real big mm-hmm. because I also I do not get motivated by having the biggest house, the most yeah. cars. I don't get motivated the same way Grant Cardone gets motivated yeah. by just having more. Do I want it? Yes. But is there that deep visceral motivation that's going to make me walk through fire to get it? Eh, quite honestly, no. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where... Cause I was thinking about this this morning again, yeah. Because it, it is, it's been in my head, like, brrr, like what? The, how do you get to that point? Like, how do you figure out your north star? And uh, maybe it's just literally, and I, I don't know a good answer. Maybe you have some ideas, but maybe it's just. I do have some ideas, but I keep going. Good, yeah. No, <laughs> I, I want to know. Uh, but just mind, you know, mind dumping or brain dumping everything on a piece of paper at least gets ideas of tangible things you might. I want a freaking yacht. Cool. Put it on the paper. I want a helicopter. Cool. Sounds big and bad, but at the same time, we know people who have that. It's yeah, not right. really out of touch. <laughs> you know, those are the types of things that once you get there, you're you get there, and you're kind of like, meh, I'm I've been there, done that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so where are your ideas? Because well, I'm curious. Well, so well, so first of all, also along these lines, the um, you know what's funny, by the way, just to interject for all my listeners, before the, the hour and a half that we talked before this, we were talking about how a lot of the episodes that get the most downloads and the most feedback are the ones that talk about mindset, not yeah, tactics yeah. and business. And now here we are talking about <laughs> yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah, we've shifted into that. <laughs> but everybody's going to have tuned out already on all the other well, stuff. The funny thing is you ask what nut we have to crack. And I think most of this the nuts is, in our business that we have to crack are not related to anything here. technical. Yeah, it's between it's your ears. mental stuff. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So number one, I hate the, I've always hated this question. What would you do if money was no object? Mm-hmm. Guess what, motherfucker? Money's an object. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine it <laughs> not being an object, yeah. right? Like it is. It literally is an object, and most of us cannot even fathom because number one, if all of us came into millions and millions of dollars, right? Let's just say we exit our company mm-hmm. uh, and we have twenty million, fifty million, hundred million dollars. Each one of us is going to travel, party, and have a bunch of fun for a, a, until it gets really boring. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. All of us. I don't care who you are, unless you've got a your your you've got your north star. Mm-hmm. But we're going to do that for a little while because that's ultimately what like that's blowing off all this pent up steam. Sure. And I don't think any of us really know what it's like to have money no object. Mm-hmm. Like money no object is a very 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 big thing, and it's now you like you want, kind of want to focus on being significant rather than just being like I've used this concept before is like, would I rather be uh, significantly successful or successfully significant mm. in my life? And that significance like is the thing. Like I want to be significant to myself, to the, to my family and to the people who look up to me and all two of them. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, the thing is I, I've tried to break it down like this. Okay. Like what do I, like I take a look at life, the life I'm living now, I call this like life a, Mm-hmm. which is what am I currently doing or it's not too far out of my realm, like marketing, consulting, e-com business, et cetera. How could that get better? Right. So that's one version. But then I start to think, okay, well, what would I do if that part is over? Maybe it's through an exit. Maybe I couldn't do it anymore, but it's off the table. What would I do? And it might have something to do with kind of making an impact or, um, or it might have something to do with just something more fun and fulfilling and just something enjoyable. It's not necessarily this deep, 
humanity based right right uh thing but uh, i think okay well what would i do if that if that life was over so i could literally couldn't consult another marketing thing i couldn't start another e-com business or whatever what would it be and then the third one is now what would i do if money or image was no concern so what I've done is I've kind of, uh, and by the way, I don't have an answer to this. This is something I'm currently working on. Yeah, yeah. And But what I, by bridging that gap between where I'm my current reality and what would I do if money was no concern, and I, I put money or image as well, because a lot of us would just, maybe we'd be Casey Neistat, be on the, you know, do crazy right. YouTube videos, but then we're worried, well, what would people think in my business? Yeah. Mm. Right? Well, what, what if money or image was no concern, but I've sandwiched it in between, well, that, that third one. So I... I've found that it allows me to just think much more laterally, like, mm-hmm. well, maybe I'd make movies and maybe I do this, you know, yeah. whatever. But um, I don't know. Uh, the, the bigger part is like, I have a hard time thinking about a goal in terms of my role for humanity. Sure. Like sure. I don't, I don't have, I do. And by the way, I, it annoys the hell out of me when I see these, a lot of entrepreneurs and gurus who go, I want to create a million millionaires. Yeah, <laughs> I want to impact a million people. I, feel I want like to make it's a, a cop out. Like it's yeah. it's, it's, it's just, a total cop out. Yeah. bullshit. Yep, I agree because I yep. know some people that we know together collectively. We won't name any names. So I'm like, it sounds great on paper. It sounds great on your website as a vision for the company. You know, but I'm like, is that really motivating you? Yeah, no. half the time honest. I feel like that vision is part of their marketing tactic. Yeah, that's how I feel yeah. as well, and it also. I, and I personally, I would rather know that I've helped five people turn their lives around and had deep yep. impacts on them than I've than I've kind of inspired five million people with my podcast. Like I'd much rather know that the five people yep. that I've worked with have had dramatically different lives because th- that will ripple out. That's bigger leverage points. And it maybe this comes back full circle to both of our business models, which is very similar mm-hmm. of why we are not trying to sell products to the masses. Why we're trying to go much, much deeper, deeper and yeah. work, roll our sleeves up and work hand in hand with some real game changers. Um, why I like to invite people for a VIP day to spend eight to 10 hours with me, sometimes more in a room with a whiteboard and we just go deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know you guys are doing that as well um, to figure out how can we really change your world? Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that motivates me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, as far as North Stars go, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, maybe that's a North, or maybe that's leading to a North Star is is helping people go deep. But maybe it's qualifying which people or businesses or nonprofits, whatever. Maybe there is something they're working on that you can yeah. help them then go deep. And it could be humanity. It could be just making people rich, or it could be cool What's cars. Interesting. I mean, who knows? We did an interview with somebody on our podcast yesterday who, in his career has put on these massive concerts in New York, right? He, he's had Jay-Z, he's had uh, the Fighters, Rolling Stones, the Foo Fighters, um, all these people. He's, he's, he's gotten them on stage and he's gotten, um, he's put on these events that had 60,000 people at it and all of it was for charity. And, he, and with this charity that he, he helped build, they raised $1.2 billion to help um, alleviate world poverty. And wow. um, what he actually realized after doing this for years and years and years, that he was actually much more fulfilled by working with people individually and actually seeing the impact on a one-on-one basis with a much smaller group of people, because Me it's too. almost like, it's almost like an MLM scheme for good, right? <laughs> if if yes. that can change somebody's mindset to help better the world, and that person can change two people's mindsets to help better the world. He actually started to look at his business more on that level on if I can help a handful of people change their mindset and change their game to help better the world, those people will each go out and help a handful of people. And that's then you just how have I feel. a giant pyramid scheme of everybody out there bettering the world. And he right. felt that that was much, much, much more impactful than putting on these events that literally raised $1.2 billion for his charity. Right. Well, and you know, I, I've read... I don't know, a thousand books in my life. I'm guessing, you know, I've read hundreds of yeah. books. I know that. Um, and I've listened to a lot of podcasts, watched a lot of motivational YouTube videos and met a lot of people real briefly or whatever who've inspired me in one way or another. But there've been so few books, um, like non-personal interactions. There's been so few that I can count them on one hand that have changed the trajectory of my life. Mm. So it is so rare for somebody putting out content, even Gary Vee and he's yeah. inspiring or whatever. But um, 
to where, but I've had mentors. Mm -hmm. I've had personal coaches, mentors, et cetera, who have, who have made, like they've said one thing or they spent an hour with me and gave me one magical insight that was custom for me. It completely changed the course of my career and my life. And um, yeah, so I, I look at it like that. I'd much rather be that person and go deep than go walk, yeah. be a laser rather than a floodlight. For yeah. sure. Interesting that. nuts you guys got the crack. Yeah. <laughs> got some good nuts over interesting, here. Nu- interesting nuts you've got on you. <laughs> some good nuts. I think that's just the biggest one that's been on our mind lately. I'm sure we've got plenty of other nuts, but that, that didn't come out right. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. This is yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Any, uh, anything you guys want to plug? Anything you want to leave people just, with if they want to get more information from you? Uh, Obviously, subscribe to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. Yeah, is it Hustle it and Flow Chart? Or I thought it was Hustle and Flow. Hustle, Hustle and Flow Chart. Chart. Hustle and Flow yeah. was a movie from like the 1990s. That's right. That's yeah, like, yeah. That's a jack and name. Piggybacking. But uh, just check out evergreenprofits.com. You're going to see everything there. Podcast yeah. is there. All and the you'll content. see it forever, ever. 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 Yeah. You'll never get rid of us after that. Do you want herpes? Go to Evergreen Profits. Unless, yes. of course, you clear your cookies. But don't do that. Never clear your cookies why why would you right, yeah hopefully you're not one of those savages browsing the internet with an ad blocker right uh, <laughs> evil no ad evil. blockers actually block freaking oh man i hate that they, yeah they block cookies. like your, yeah, yeah. The, any sort of pixels now so like yeah retargeting uh, pixels all that stuff well yeah. It, it, yeah. it blocks our conversion pixels too so if somebody actually opts into our Squeeze site it, it actually doesn't show the conversion in facebook anymore either so oh, that's a, that's really annoying but yeah. um disrupting the industry yeah no evergreenprofits.com has links out to everything we do the hustle and flowchart podcast if you want to hire us to build a custom game plan for you if you want to uh, read some of our content it's all there get thrivecart.com had pretty much it's like the best place to see everything in action yeah, yeah i love that I, yeah it's just a cool like case study i'll call it and then we'll, we'll also give you a link to where you can get um, our, our sort of flow chart of how all these pieces fit together. And then I'll, we'll throw in those, those training videos of how we actually use mini chat in our, our business as well. In the show Fan, notes. So we'll, uh, we'll, I, don't, I don't have a link URL for you yet, but I'll get you one that you can throw in the show notes. Yeah, we'll create this. Now, I mean, you guys have a little bit of time. This comes out in February of 2019. No, oh, Jesus. Sounds like you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A little right. behind there. No, just kidding. Right. It, but it's the next episode. I'm just not releasing anything yeah. for a year. So. You're, on a, you're on a one a year schedule now. <laughs> yes. That's cool. That's cool. You got to pay close attention or you'll miss I it. Envy that. Right? That'd be great. Nice. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for thank uh, you. joining me on the. Uh, podcast bacon Rat business and for anybody still with us on this marathon episode <laughs> which has been chock full of awesome i am not apologizing at all to anybody for uh, how long and great this has been may have to uh, there's a lot of chunks out here that can be like actually split up as really good micro content which i love when we're able to do um subscribe to the show tell your friends tag me tag the boys here in social media uh, when you share this, I didn't say if, I said when you share this on social, uh, let us know. And if you have questions, concerns, if you have ideas, uh, or if you are kind of up against a nut you're trying to crack and you don't know how to get unstuck, shoot me an email. Ask Brad at baconwrappedbusiness.com. There is a better than average chance I will not hit delete. <laughs> but I will actually read it and um, and reply to you. I do appreciate all of my listeners. And if there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know. Gentlemen, we got to get a beer sometime soon. We, we are close and let's make it happen. Thank you, man. This has been fun. All right, guys. Yeah. See, ya. See you on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>